Okay, now continuing on with the head. I have the ears, which are a very different kind of lighting and color scenario than the rest. But before I even get into the direct adjustments, I can start doing some of the internal cleaning up. But a lot of that blue is covered up by layers on top. So I don't want to get too into it, but I can just take it down a little bit. Anytime I see sh uh, sharp edges on the inside, makes me a little nervous. Now the ears are really the highlight of this. And I can go ahead because this background behind the ears, this is a piece of taxidermy, is pretty sharp and pretty even. I can go ahead and use my magic wand. Hold down shift to add to it to try to get all that kind of background and then just delete and see what I get. And for the most part, that's a pretty good cutout. There might be little things I need to go in and adjust by hand when I go around the whole thing. But I didn't lose anything vital, which is nice. And it really shows off those teeth now coming from behind. All right. So let's do some direct adjustments with the, the color. And really just taking down some of the yellow, pushing it more towards red. But let's start with levels. Do I want it lighter or do I want it darker? It looks like I want it lighter. Maybe limit the highlights just a touch. And actually, maybe limit, I, haven't, I don't do this very much, but maybe limit the shadows, because those seem to be really close to, to black. So I'm just going to limit the shadows a little. Then I go to Adjustments, Color Balance, to try giving it a little bit of blue. And the highlights, maybe a little bit of red. Taking it away from yellow. Then the shadows, maybe even putting some of that color back in. Let's see if I like that difference. Remember, you can always use your, your history states for this. Yep, that looks better. Now, the big guns, hue saturation. I can play with shifting the, the entire hue. Maybe just a little bit this way. And maybe the saturation down just a little bit. And maybe the lightness. I'm just going to darken it a tiny bit. Though that's pretty much better controlled with levels anyway. Than here. There aren't any colors I necessarily want to target. But I could try reds in hue saturation. And really uh, like just shift their, their spectrum a little bit maybe darken them a little bit like that all looks pretty believable and next so now i've got a lot of different layers all at once instead of adjusting all their colors individually i think i want to take the outliers this fur is really important so i'm going to Leave this kind of as it is and just focus on this layer for now. I'm going to start with adjustment layers, levels. I'm going to brighten its midtones, but limit its highlights. This has been pretty common in most of what I do. And maybe limit its shadows a little bit. They're pretty darn dark. And this is an example where clone stamping can help a lot to bring those kind of shadows down into the neck. And this is where clone stamping current and below makes a lot more sense than all layers. So 
So let's clone stamp. I'll turn off what's above it. And I'm going to make a new layer. Mark it as red. And label it so I know what this layer is. And then use my clone stamp tool. I just want to take some of these shadows and extend them. Without extending the whiskers that go with them. So a lot of moving my target and some textures are more forgiving of this kind of technique than others. Luckily fur is fairly forgiving. Don't want that whisker in there. All right. And because it's on the clone stamp, I can just uh, use it in different ways. I can erase away from it. I can transition it as needed. And show some of that lighter fur underneath when necessary. Let's get the eye to really pop using levels. This time I'm going to push the highlight. Eyes are important, so I'm going to brighten that up. Maybe even push the shadow a little bit, but not so much that I lose definition. I'm not going to limit the highlight. Instead, I'm just going to blend away from it slightly. All right, so that eye is nice and sharp. Maybe I want that eye to be more saturated. So this is a good use of the sponge tool. I can set the sponge tool to saturate right in that eye. And I can hit it a bunch of times, try to bring out whatever color there is in the eye. There's a lot of red. You can see I'm kind of bringing out those flecks. I can also use the dodge tool on the mid-tones, nice and tight and small, but soft edged at below 30. And I can bring out some of those mid-tone in the eye. And I can use the burn tool on the mid-tones just to deepen that pupil. So the eye really shows up. And if I don't like what I've done or I've done it too much, dodge and burn are direct tools that change very quickly. I can just quickly hit it with some in-layer clone stamping. I can even give the eye an extra highlight with that clone stamp if I want. Kind of anime highlights. I can give its pupil a little bit of a reflected light. So many things that are possible when you have these tools. Again, I'm not painting, though this looks a lot like digital painting. I am clone stamping. I am stealing pixels from one place and putting them somewhere else. Whether I'm doing it within the layer or on a different layer. Then I can always dodge and burn. All 
like so. So I've got a nice strong eye there as a focal point. Dodge and burn will be a nice finishing technique for the rest of it as well. In fact, I might want to do some clone stamping. on the fox's ears or between them with some of this texture. Let's see. Because the top of the head just isn't very textured. Maybe I want a little bit more of that. And by doing it on its own layer, I can always erase away from it and transition. So that helps bring around that kind of coloring. So the more layers you use, the more elements you composite with, the more kind of elements you need to keep track of and be aware of as you're cleaning it up. Now the fox's ears. This might be a good place for dodging and burning. So I'm going to burn inside them a little bit. Give them a little bit more definition. As it burns, it's going to saturate the color a little bit. And if it saturates it too much, then I can use the sponge tool to take that saturation down. Sometimes it will do the opposite, and then you've got to use the sponge tool to bring the saturation back up. So these are like direct adjustments, but these are tool adjustments. Which can be very helpful. And then of course we have clone stamp to help move, transition, patch, adjust tones, colors, textures, all towards what we want. And then the last tool, which is going to be useful to me on the nose, because it's slightly less in focus than the eye, and is going to be the sharpen tool. You'll find it underneath the gradient tool, underneath the eraser. There's the blur and the sharpen tool. And the sharpen tool, all it does, it's a lot like a dodge and burn. I use it at a fairly low strength, usually below 50%. I'm at 39 right now. But you can just hit the areas you want to increase the contrast at the edges. And you can see I'm doing it a lot. And sometimes I have to let the computer catch up with me. You can see my whole history of Sharpen tool. But you'll only really see the effect it's had when you go back in your history and see what it was like before you did it. So look at the nose here. This is where I was using it. That was before any sharpening. This was after any sharpening, and it didn't do a darn thing. And you know why? Because I'm still on the clone stamp layer. So now I'm on the right layer, and we can try that again. Ah, there we go. Now it tends to work a little fast. So if you want to, you can even make a duplicate. But if you have like a lot of sharp focus around the eye, then you want the elements around the eye to kind of match with that focus. And this can be used to bring uh, contrast to fur to other textures as well. So let's go back in the history. Before I did it, you'll see how that really sharpens up the nose and around the eye. Let's see, so a little bit of this. I think I want to color adjust it just by burning, using dodge and burn. I'm going to burn the mid-tones just of this fur so it's not so bright around the face. Those highlights are really reserved for the face itself. Do it a bit on the snout, too. Bring that shadow in. I could do a little bit on my clone stamping. Okay, now for the next video, I'm ready to clean up the...